Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer. Mark Sargent is here. We should start over. Ready? I know, here we, we go. should start over. Ready? Hi, welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is our redo of our <laughs> intro to our... <laughs> You know, we, no. we, we don't script this. Here's the problem. We don't script this, and we've never to date had come up with like any sort of standard opening. And we where... also talk over each other all the time because we don't script anything. Exactly. How so, could you ever script anything like this? Uh, no, got to be too exhausting. It would be like scripting the birds and the trees. <laughs> wow. Seriously. No, <laughs> no. I was going to say, I don't know if people want like a standard intro. It's like you say, you know, I'm Patricia Steer, and I say, well, and I'm Mark Sargent or something. Mm. And sometimes I do a really long intro if there's That's lots of topics I, I want to actually hit. And in this right. case, there's so much going on. We're just going to... Um, wong it. We're going to wong it. <laughs> and if you've been here with us for a while, you'll know exactly where that word comes from. Right. Anyway, Mark Sargent. Yes. There he is with his glowing microphone. Hello. And I've got my hair up in what could best be described as a... I don't know. <laughs> Woman, so. you you have the most pliable hair I've ever met on any woman, and actually, or man, ever. I took a rubber band and I wung it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, so much going on. After the show, Jaron on the Jaronism channel has a debate. Tell us with, about with, Aaron, with Aaron Raw. Wow. I Remember know. Remember when Aaron Raw... And you were kind of going at it for a little uh, while? A little bit. Uh, it, okay, there was a reason why. And hey, kudos to Jaron. I hope he does great against him. I'm sure he'll he'll rip him up. So for those who don't know who Aaron Raw is. Uh, convicted killer. No. He is the head of the, oh boy. And it's been a while. You know, it's been it was middle of 2017, I think. Uh head of the texas atheist society yeah i just figured an atheist that's how i would best describe him with an egyptian sort of name which i don't quite understand because the egyptians had gods right. so hmm very mm. confusing anyway so jaron has a debate with aaron Ra. now jaron is not a um wouldn't consider himself a christian um, he doesn't consider himself an atheist nor an, uh, a Satanist or anything like that. Right. But it would be an interesting debate with the two of them. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, hard to say because Aaron, uh, that was one of the reasons I didn't get into it. Sorry, Peanut Gallery is already telling me that it's like your back, your CGI backdrop is curling. Oh. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> because it's not actually CGI. It's actually real. I can touch it. The Mine CGI, though. Be doing the yes it is doing the atheist thing it, it, i think aaron wants to get into it he wants to do his side globalist side atheist versus christian flat earther but that's not going to happen he's not going to get rob skiba or robbie Davidson or zen garcia or any of those guys to, to come up against him and really why should he so i don't know if those two set terms i don't know exactly what jaron's plan is i don't know what aaron's plan is so I'm I'm sure it'll work out fine. So I'm I'm gonna watch it. He's got yeah. a podcast called the Raw Man Podcast. That's R A, and um, he wears black suits and big black hats. He he looks, has a very distinctive appearance. Uh, well, yeah, he looks like a roadie from Rob Zombie. That's what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like meatloaf, kind of. Uh, I don't know. Commingled with. I can't even think of who he, he looks like he should be in the music industry in the mid 90s right lifting things he's not lifting singing things. yeah not exactly not necessarily <laughs> singing he's a big guy from what i can tell yes, okay so anyway good good luck to jaron i hope that pans out it's gonna be happening right after this thing i don't know if it's gonna happen on time uh, but i'm sure it'll be because aaron ross got uh, I, you know it's weird because back when aaron first got into this jaron didn't have Hundred thousand subs, and now he does. So he's kind of, you know, as far as subs go, pretty pretty close with Aaron. So I'm trying to find out a little bit more about him. I don't pay much attention to him, obviously. So I'm looking uh, him up right now. It, well, I mean, you remember the name, though. I mean, he got into yes, it last year, and I think he's getting back into it now. 
well, like a lot of people, and we'll talk about that because of the bandwagon. We're we're now this flat Earth has caught fire to where there's just about every channel knows it's like, well, we can get more hits and we can get more views and we can get more comments. So everybody's jumping on it. Even even obscure channels are jumping on it, which we again we will talk about. One thing about Aaron Ra, his family or most of his family identifies as Mormon. So perhaps that's that. given him an interesting perspective and maybe why he, he turned that way. Mm -hmm. um, he said, you know, I'm reading this from Wikipedia, as we know, a trusted source, but hey, it's all I've got on short notice. Right. At five years old, he was getting into arguments about religion with people. Hmm. Meanwhile, I was trying to find a lollipop. So, hey. <laughs> I mean, you know, five, I don't remember too much. At six, I remember realizing that we were all mortal and my parents would die someday. And I remember crying about it and how at that age, six, I, I remember the room I was in, the, everything about it. Um, and, and that was when I first realized that I'm mortal, my, my mother and father. And it seemed like they were going to die so soon. But I mean... They didn't. My my dad in 2008 and my mom in 2014. In a way, it is in the blink of an eye as time goes by so fast. But I did not lose them at an early age. But boy, that puts a lot of fear into a child when they first realize that that their parents are going to die. That's and pretty deep for a six-year-old. Yeah. So at five, looking for a lollipop. Six, I don't know, looking at uh, the meaning of life. And then you <laughs> discovered high-end shoes. <laughs> downward slope <laughs> exactly anyway we've got our live chat buzzing along hello to everybody in the live chat and thank you to the moderators who are moderating but doing nothing because everyone's being nice we've got apple pie plane here who says flat earth is taking over whether the globies like it or not andres right. ace is here timaeus nathan oakley who said wow morbid <laughs> it was morbid for sure but then again a child's world has so much uh so many morbid things in it think about when you're a child all the thing i remember finding a bird's nest and some eggs that were cracked on the ground and then just crying and holding it and knowing that in my mind birds had died although they were they were eggs and i didn't see any small small birds inside but just there's so many things that involve death when you're a child you're so much more close to the ground, to be honest. You see worms, you see snakes. It's just, it's a different world than when you're an adult and your mind is filled with adult things like making a living, paying the bills, responsibilities. When you're a child, it's a lot of playtime and learning, but then, you know, a lot of reality as well. So, okay. and look at all the fairy tales with all the aspects of death in there. <laughs> There what, are. What and we all your, know it. What is your thing today? It, it, are, are we doing some s subtle foreshadowing? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not all at right. all. <sighs> anyway. All right. So, well, hello to Laurel Austin. And uh, did I say Erwin already? Karen B. Oh, by the way, Karen B. was on point when she joined you on Truth Frequency Radio last night. Um, that's now in the archives of TFR and also on your channels. That was Karen B. Show. is great. Great. She was a wonderful guest and uh, very, uh, very composed. I, I tried to rattle her as best I could. And she was, I mean, she's not as good as you where I can't get you to break character ever. Because <laughs> that's, but, this is who I am. That's why. No, but you think I get, I, I could get Karen, but, and not really. She, she did not cut loose much. Mm. So. Well, she's a, I think she has a lot of fun in her, a lot of uh, a fun spirit. And no, I don't think so. Also I serious as well. I nope. think she's all business. Pretty much just just <laughs> flat accord music says Patricia is in, in a goth mode today. In fact, I kind of am with a velvet choker. That's pretty darn goth. So it's and nice. we're talking about Aaron Ra. So Right. Go. Um, hello to Jibby Jedi and D I T R H and page 42. Page 42 is adding on to what I was saying earlier. By adding, as a child, I helped a drowning baby bird in the middle of a lake by throwing a bit of wood for it to climb on. It didn't end well. Oh, no. <laughs> I have rescued. I should have just read that a whole different way and said, and the bird lived just to make everyone feel better. I have rescued, and even though I never worked at the Humane Society, I've rescued numerous animals over my life. Two dogs, uh, several cats, including Aww. a kitten who I named Christmas and eventually gave to the Humane Society. Did you find that cat on uh, Valentine's Day? 
joke because it's named Christmas. No, it's weird because I, I I'm pretty sure it was on Mother's Day. Oh, well, yeah. No, no, I no, I no, I found it on Christmas morning. Oh, that's it, was, lovely. it was stuck in a in an abandoned or a deck that was uh, of a a rental unit that was not rented, and there was no way the cat was going to get out. And so I gave two and a fish and drove it to the uh, Humane Society later in the day. Because Flat Earth photographer says we have all rescued animals, or wait, that's all we have are rescued animals. Oh, I get it now. Yes. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, in a way, my cats, somebody abandoned them on, a ste on the steps of a veterinary office when they were kittens, and I, I ended up adopting them. Um, I mean, are we rescuing animals when we adopt them from the pound? Yes. From the street? Yes. I guess if you buy from a breeder, that's not rescuing. So no. I have uh, purebreds, and to me, purebreds are the weakest animals. However... Hey, if you love a purebred animal, you love a purebred animal. Yeah. I love them all. My, my sister does P Italian spumonis. I think that's an ice cream. Spumoni? No, no, no. Everyone confuses it. Sp spino spinoni. Ah, I don't know that one. Spinoni. It's a, anyway, it's a fuzzy, irritating dog. Yeah, I know. I've seen because I've been at her house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, one and, more thing. I just want to say hi to CC and Dan Cooper and Stephen Watson and Tommy Rogers and Mag Scent and everyone else. And I'll come back in the live chat a little later. Hello to Lucy Lemons, who's just joined us. Uh, we have Bob of Globusters and P Paula and Wesley Stace and Flat Earth News Talk and Andre Brosau and everybody. So back now to what we were talking about. What were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, uh, you know what? I have a prediction uh, about the debate today. Between does it involve anybody dying? Because <laughs> we don't want to. No, <laughs> no, we're not. I don't think we're going to continue the death. Is it going to come to fisticuffs between Aaron Ra and Jaren? No, I put my uh, money on Jaren. Aaron Ra's a big guy, but Jaren. Jaren's a big guy too. Yeah. So between between the debate between Aaron Ra and Jaren, I predict that Aaron Ra will wear black. Mm, I predict Jaren will wear a hat. That's actually more bold than mine. It's it's a guaranteed. I don't think Aaron <laughs> owns anything but black. He owns basically 50 shades of black. Black like his heart. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so that debate's coming up after the secret show. On yep. the way, if you're watching at a later date, it is April 11th, 2018. So... What's up? What's going on? What's new? Uh, a lot of stuff. Be what I have been predicting over the last eighteen months is is becoming reality, and the big thing is now the social media gold rush is in full effect. You the, mean everybody's jumping on the flat Earth bandwagon? Bandwagon, absolutely, they are. <laughs> they it doesn't take it didn't take just PewDiePie to do it, and I know some people don't want me to bring up PewDiePie, but I have I'm to. I'm happy PewDiePie included the conference um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, from last year, and myself in it, and you in it, and everyone. Oh, yeah. That was right Even after he made fun of us. I don't care. I don't. That care. was right after our last show. Where and yes, we did on a Wednesday and Thursday morning is like, oh, by the way, Mark, did you see? It's like. Oh no! It's and like, he put my hat on a crow, which I've always wanted to fly. So good job, PewDiePie. Right? Yeah, he put you and him in the same scene with head, you know, his head on Jon Snow's body and your head on an actual crow. And of course, it was the Game of Thrones reference going to the whole ice wall. Right, right. And, because that's the only thing he can really grasp about the ice wall. This is somehow tied to Game of Thrones, which it is not. He but the, can't grasp too much by the looks of that particular video. But you know what? No such thing as bad publicity. A lot of people laughed and made horrible comments in the comment section of the video. But there were a few people guaranteed who will look into Flat Earth, who have looked into Flat Earth after that, and will find validity and are doing their research right now. They're not eating. They're not sleeping. <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as much as... Uh, as much as I would like to say that, that that PewDiePie isn't he isn't legit and you know he 60 million subs you know the the most in the history of the world not a chance but there the people underneath him they look up and they say okay what's PewDiePie doing what's PewDiePie doing and when he did it once about a month ago when he mentioned it in passing ah it's all right whatever but he did it twice and now this why time, of all people did he put you and I on the thumbnail I don't know I don't know why They're did much they bigger 
flat earthers than than me, for example. I, I, I and you even, you know? I, yeah, I, I don't Why's have. Why not I don't, on that thing? There's there's lots of people with more subs. Uh, I think mostly because of the interviews. Well, what about the fact that we've been kind of talking about him a lot lately? Somebody might have said, "Yeah, why don't you hammer those guys and the whole conference?" Maybe Not that PewDiePie watches us. I don't mean that. No, but, I know, don't. I don't think he watches us. But it no. was again super flattering. Really great. It helps us. I mean, not many people get to be on PewDiePie's thumbnail. Yeah, that's it's not that's an honor sure. I ever really wanted. But. No, <laughs> no. But at the same time, it's like I'm not going to turn it down. It's like okay, cool. Oops, sorry about that. Did you just hear that? What was it a noise? It was Flynn sneezing. Cat sneezes are so cute. So are dog sneezes. I don't know about birds bringing us back to the whole bird thing from earlier. And the raven. Maybe birds are the theme today. Bur the <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's the theme. The well, sometimes I listen back to one of our shows or think back to one of our shows if I don't, if I don't listen slash watch to part of it. And I, I noticed that there's a theme running through it that we didn't plan on. Right. So... Couple quick things because, as you know, I go into YouTube and I type in flat earth and I search with all sorts of fun filters. And when we do our show, I type in flat earth and I set the filter to one week and see, okay, what's happened over the last week. There are multiple channels now jumping on the bandwagon and they're doing it basically for the clicks. They're, they're doing it because flat earth is hot. It's, it's, <laughs> we need a t shirt that says flat earth. I did it for the clicks. <laughs> they did. They absolutely like info for top one on the list inform overload uh, Mount Everest selfie destroys flat earth theory. It is total clickbait. The thumbnail is absolutely fisheye lens. I mean, just cur you know, at the top of this mountain, it, it makes the world look, look super, super tiny. Does the video maker know that a fisheye lens distorts and that? Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They, in fact, they even said about a minute into the video, the video is only two and a half minutes long. They say that, oh, yeah, obviously it's a fisheye lens. So, okay, if you obviously know this, why do you put that as the title? Because click it's, bait. it's clickbait. <laughs> Mount Everest selfie destroys flat earth theory. No. And wait a minute. A How did the mountain take its own picture if it's really a Mount Everest selfie? Well, I don't even know. I mean, were they at the top of Mount <laughs> Everest? Wait, mountains I don't know. were trees, and trees may have had arms because they were no, that's not going to No, no. <laughs> the, uh, one of the other ones is Brody Fox, uh, another channel that I think was hot at one point. A lot of these are people are using Flat Earth to, to get back into it. So they've got 3.4 million subs, but they haven't been doing really, you know, a, a lot of stuff. But his, his basically, it's an animated Yo Mama show. That's really what it is with Yo Mama jokes. And some of them are terrible. Hmm. I think all Yo Mama jokes are probably terrible. But they did a flat earth version of it. So the opening uh, opening 10 jokes are all flat earth based. You know, yo mama so fat and yo mama so stupid. Jokes. Got it. And it's like, okay. Uh, Me Malicious jumped on it. Uh, they've got over a million subs. Uh, and they uh, went after, they created their own flat earth Facebook group. I and saw fact, them doing it. They did it pretty much in the video kind of live. And yeah. 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 First you laugh and then you become a flat earther. And so they, they got attacked, followed down the list by PewDiePie, of course, with you and I and the thumb. It's got you know, 4.2 4 million hits in six days. Can't complain about that. Reaction time. Back, back into again. it. Remember that kid? The, the kid that went after the flat earth girl. That was, oh, God, at least a year ago. And, and she was a fake flat earth girl. She, she did it for the clicks. She did it for the clicks. And then he <laughs> did it for the clicks on her. And they were like click baiting each other. And then they dropped off. And now he's back into it because I, everyone's doing the same thing. It's like, what's hot right now? What can I get into? Oh, flat, flat earth. earth. So hot. It's so hot right now. <laughs> it is. That's, that's straight out of Zoolander. And uh, I still see the flat earth girl, the dark haired girl who did it for the clicks. I see a video made with her and it occasionally come up. It's that video remade. Somebody will steal it. And reaction. It yeah. Reaction yeah. to the yeah. flat earth girl mm -hmm. where, uh, in fact, what was it? It was a terrible name she used for herself. Uh, Schmitty. Oh yeah. S well, is that a popular channel? Probably. Uh, it's popular enough that people hate her. I mean, it, you know, she gets mostly thumbs down on her videos, but you know, she gets the views. Nothing wrong with the good old thumbs down. And she's, I think she's like 13, maybe, maybe 14. She's young. 
the other thing, which I'm really surprised we haven't had more. I mean, the, some of the people have, have uh, replicated it, which was the Fox News story. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. <laughs> very, very interesting. The Greg Gutfield show on Fox News. They That's a really, really bad last name. Gutfield. Well, Gutfeld. Oh, Gutfeld. Sounds I, I thought I thought it was going to be Gutfield, too, but no, it's Gutfeld. Okay. And they do, uh, I think it's an hour long panel show where, you know, he and four of his friends are talking about the topics of the hour. And they brought up the wonderful article, which I read at, the, at last show. You know, yes. it was just coming out, the article that said uh, that quite a few Americans are into flat earth. There was a scientific poll done, over 8,000 people. But the, the, the stat that's really stuck out was that the 18 to 24 year olds were only 66% convinced that it was a globe. You know, it's only 66% of them, which meant we had 34% that were, that were kind of on our side. And this is spooking a lot of people, a lot of scientists. And remember how I said, like, degrees of separation? That now creates a buffer. That article is a buffer for the media to latch on to. So the media doesn't have to talk to Flat Earthers directly anymore. They can go straight to articles that talk about it, which we'll get into the documentary later. And Fox News jumped on the, this, and it was, a, it was over a five-minute segment. And they closed out the show with that topic, which was which was great. And they asked everybody, and not any of them had a great scientific rebuttal. It was straight up ridicule, which or yeah. or, or yeah. denial. It's like no, no, no. I know the world is flat, or I'm smarter than you. Like the girl that says that she, you know she she thinks higher of herself because she knows it's a globe. She said it was it's a, a lot about ego. The whole um, the people yeah. who cling on to the globe. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it was great. All, all four panelists, in fact, I thought the ex-CIA guy was the best because he, even though he was kind of trying to twist it into the climate change thing, he said that we should really be careful about listening, basing our opinions on members of academia, people that, you know, why would you listen to the smart, don't, don't base all your opinions on what the smart people say. Uh, you know, do, do again what I've been saying forever. You know, do your own research, ask questions. Don't because remember, science gets things wrong, a lot, a lot. Look up, look up Popular Mechanics magazine in 1910, where they said there is no future in airplanes, even though airplanes were already starting to be built. Said, nope, nothing's ever going to come from it. Come on. So, you know what I'm saying? I know the what you're saying. Other videos, I'm trying to see. Those were pretty much the big ones. That were well, no, there. Jason A came out with a video. Oh, right, Jason right, right. A Jason A. His yep. last name is just the letter A. And uh, he just makes compilation videos. This person has no face with the video. Um, no, th there's nothing about him that I say he. Is it even a he? It could be a group of people. Uh, 149,000 views on the video called The Truth About Flat Earth, which obviously is not the truth at all, but it's a hit piece on Flat Earth, and he's monetized it as well. Um, he's got um, 875,308 subscribers at last count. He's got a website. He's got a Facebook. And um, he, he would... talks about the convention, biblical perspective, and that kind of thing. And it's not worth watching. It's another, you know, bashathon. Uh, but guess who made a response video? Robbie D of Celebrate Truth. Well, it's then. called a flat earther's response to Jason A. And that is worth looking at. And I, 166 I, people have given that video a thumbs up. That was the, the comment that that video exists in Jason A's comment section where Robbie posted that response. So, you know, there are flat earthers that have gone into Jason A's video and gone in and given flat earth comments a thumbs up, which is a really great thing to do if you have the chance to do so. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't Jason A one of our detractors back at the end of 2015? I, that name sounds really, really familiar. I'm going to have to look him up. I could have sworn that he kind of got involved back. At, you guys look that up if you get a chance. He was looking into this in 2015 and then decided, okay, I'm going to make a Flat Earth video and be done with it because, you know, Flat Earth, case closed, RIP, nothing he to bonked. see here. <laughs> yeah, debunked exactly. for, forever. Uh, also, if you guys hadn't checked it out, the what, what seemed like it was going to be a fairly routine interview turned into a debate. My my last interview, uh, Flat Earth Closed Interview number 163, Paramania Radio, 
Mm -hmm. small little podcast and we get into it and the his the co-host decided he was going to go after it and try to debunk it and so we spent two hours without commercial breaks just going toe to toe all right so is he a flat earther now <laughs> no no he was well the problem and i did not realize this until about 30 minutes into the show he's an amateur astronomer okay there and you go. i have yet to see an amateur astronomer just throw away his telescope and say screw it it's flat he but was if you're gonna an amateur astronomer you are looking through a telescope like I, any of us would if we had a backyard telescope. Right. You're not seeing what NASA shows us at all. How can you delude yourself into thinking that you are when it comes to the planets? Well, well, because you're so far in, you're just yeah, you're so far in. Most amateur astronomers start out pretty young. Right. You know, the whole it's like I was saving up for my first telescope, childhood and, dream. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I may be an astronaut someday, Dad. You know, that whole thing. No, you won't, son, because <laughs> there really aren't any unless you mean an actronaut. Wait a spoil a kid's dream, dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that was that was pretty fun. I and I enjoyed that. Uh so you, know, you I, like I, debates. I do more than the, the standard fare. I mean, it's something relaxing about sitting down. It's like, okay, you're gonna ask me 30 questions, which I've heard a million times. So do you like street activism I, I don't mean are you in favor of it because i know you are you're in favor of any way to get the word out as i am but right. do you actually like going and doing street activism i no, it's not my role it, it isn't some people are much more it's a whole different type of energy yeah. when you're doing street I'll activism agree with that. you're doing I, I, i'm the type of guy that you know you you know the type who if you had a clipboard and you're told, okay, 10 bucks an hour, you're going to walk it, you're going to start polling people in malls. Yeah, no, that'd be worse than death. It's mm. just, it's well, like, you've uh, got to be able, if you're a street activist, you've got to be able to think on your feet and you've got to be able to understand that there may be some angry people that will be coming your way. And it, it really hones your chops, I guess, when it comes to flat earth proofs to do street activism. And I say hats off to those who do it. It's not my role that I've selected for myself in all of yeah. this either, but I think it's totally necessary and I stand behind all who do it. And uh, there are so many that uh, succeed so well. Yeah, yeah. That, there's, some, you know, there's some excellent cool. street activists out there and people that are flat smacking people. And yeah, that's that part's great. It's It's not me. But that's okay because I, you know, I wait for, for me, I want the people to come to me and say, okay, now I'll get into a, a street debate if somebody mm -hmm. you know offers and maybe that'll happen in the future. If somebody recognizes me and says, oh yeah, you're that stupid flat earth guy. I got a couple questions for you. It's like, <laughs> okay. But as you know, my, like the thing that I've been kind of focusing on is trying to get higher caliber debaters if possible. Right. I mean, I'm trying to get people from the scientific community to engage me, and it is still like, like a root canal. It's trying to trying to make that happen. It oh. is tough, tough, tough. Act of Congress. You know what I'm saying? I do want to mention. Um, uh, Magsent is mentioning street activism toughens you up. I am sure authentic intent is being mentioned in our live chat as being somebody who does it particularly well. John Smith, Globe Lies, Dell, Beyond the Imaginary Curb. Uh, Daniel Reza as well said he's in the streets, flat smacking daily. Lots of tourists come to him. See, um, I, I, I like think it's great. It's clever great. ways. I appreciate the clever ways that people will flat smack. Speaking of clever, flat earth vegans, they go out there and flat smack and they often use these um, these cards that DITRH has printed up with some information yep. on them and they leave them in interesting places in grocery stores and just wherever. So there's there's many ways to do it and it can be fun i um, leave cards around but i am not the person who goes toe to toe with somebody on the street it's just not my thing i do other things we all have a role to play in this if you decide to be involved in flat earth and to me activism is everything that we do if you write a blog if you uh, are in a live chat if you are on various uh, google hangouts if you make videos if you're in other people's videos it's all important Every single one of those things is a form of activism. It's not passivism. You know, we're actively trying to wake people up. So we're all right. activists, but some of us are street activists. And I give you a salute because that's tough work. Agreed. Agreed. So what else are we 
Talk no, about. I think that's the show. That's it. That's it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> the uh, No, no, no. There, there's all sorts of fun stuff we could talk about. Let's talk about real quick something which would be fun for any flat earther that's into it right now. And that is, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed yet, and again, you have to be in the comment section and, and read a lot of stuff. You're not going to talk about Math Powerland being naked, are you? Speaking of <laughs> you know what? Let, let's let's thumb. let's back it up and talk about that thumbnail. <laughs> what the hell? You know, it got people to talk. I will say this: the man is cre creative energy incarnate. I will say that. Yeah, there you go. But doing a what appears to be a, a sort of a half Adam and Eve, half tribal paint body painting. But he looks really, really white, and she looks like she's been painted with a tan spray paint. Yeah, I don't know what that's where, supposed where to did say. they shoot that? Because I, I, uh, I think it's very bold. Uh, it's bold, and you know, I mean, I don't. To and Matt totally and, rearrange a, the expression. The uh, the the wind goes to the bold. I mean, you know, and and well, heck, let's. Do, the wind goes to the bold. No favor, f fortune favors the bold. I know. I just went with oh, instead went of with fortune because well, no, let's let's treat this like our, money. like our old style secret show type type stuff. Let, let's let's talk gossip a little bit here. All right. Is Did it you just hear about so and so? <laughs> whisper, whisper, whisper. The no, no. It also, uh, Matt Long has been hanging out with Matt recently. That's cool. He's got like two two videos now. I don't know if he if he's up in Vegas, if he's hanging out in Vegas, if he if went Vegas, shot a couple videos and left. But I saw him where Matt was playing the psychiatrist and Matt Long was lying on the on the couch hmm. giving, you know, getting flatter therapy. So, wow, maybe maybe Matt is mellowing a bit. I don't know. Well, I think it's cool when flatters just get together. And if that's what's going on, I didn't know any of that. That's cool. Yeah, I, the, I again I once caught the video today. And, and by the way, I will watch the Jason A video. I am curious. I'm I'm almost positive that Jason went and and lit us up at the end of 2015. Well, here's a question for the live chat. I'm not familiar with Jason A. Sometimes Jason A has good videos, but they're very clickbaity. They're very uh, doom and gloomy about world destruction, end of the world, and and, there, and lots. Of, he discusses lots of different things. But I keep right. saying he and discusses. No, it's compilations of videos strung together. Is Jason A a real person? Does anybody know for sure? Oh, because he doesn't actually use his voice, right? I'm gonna have to look it up. So we don't know. Uh, after this, after I catch the Jaron Aaron Raw thing, which I personally, my, my personal opinion is, I think they're going to be on completely different frequencies. And when that happens, the debate sort of, you know, it's like the like big sword swings, and nobody's hitting anybody because they're they're complete. You know, Aaron's got a, an agenda, and Jaron's got an agenda, and they're just not meshing. Usually, when you have to, when you get a really good debate going, you've got to be on the same page. You know, I'm going to attack you this way. You're going to attack me this way. There'll be some back and forth. But I've just got this. Yeah, just it's going fun. to be on the Jaronism channel, though, correct? Uh, I believe so. In fact, After the live. The yeah. If, in fact, let me look it up real quick. So if I go to live events. Which is April 11th, once again, 2018. In case you're wondering. Uh, there's there's about. me and you. There's ODD. There's Celebrate Truth. There's so many. Space and Universe. Okay. Soundly. Space videos. Earth discernment. Uh, no one I, seems to know about Jason A. Uh, a lot of people are saying pretty much the same thing that uh, no one knows who it is. I've thought about wondering who that is as well. So uh, let, me, let me type in Aaron Raw. Just give me one second. I'm reading the live chat, and it's just it's funny, always funny. Um, Tommy Rogers saying exactly what I was kind of inferring that Jason A. Channel's been around for years, but the same fear porn. Overall, yeah. And it's enticing to listen or watch fear porn videos that are talking about, you know, food shortages, government takeover, FEMA camps. But after a while, you realize, a lot. okay, I know there's lots of things that are bad that are happening, but you realize, you know, that you, that, you, that video came out three years ago and you're, you're still here and you can still right. go to the store and buy food. Um, and I'm not a Pollyanna. I don't think that, you know, if nothing bad ever is going to happen. But generally speaking, I do have that belief about my life 
and about generally all of us, nothing really bad that we can't overcome is going to happen. None of this fear porn things that they're, the, they're talking the about. Peanut, peanut Gallery just sent me a link to the, and this is the modified Peanut Gallery. This is this is this is the normal Peanut Gallery. This is another. For those who don't know, Peanut Gallery is a person who chooses to remain anonymous right. and who sends Mark little tidbits of information. You know. So live in sixty-five minutes on the non sequitur show. Apparently, that's going to be neutral ground for the oh, debate. Oh, so they're going to be on the non sequitur show. Yep, the non sequitur show, which has eh, four and a half thousand subs, and it's called Aaron Ra versus Jaronism Battlefield <laughs> Battlefield Flat Earth. That's funny. And in the live chat is a link provided by DITRH. Uh, Nothing bad ever happens to me. I guess is a song from Oingo Boingo, and I didn't know that, but Bob from Globebusters has said so. Good, I've got a theme song. Unless I saw Oingo Boingo in concert else. in Seattle. You did? Yeah. Were they okay? Yeah, they were good. This is back, you know, before this is back in the mid eighties, back when they were absolutely at the top of their game and they were just starting to get into movie soundtracks. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? Hello to Time Matters and Dan Cooper. Um, Ginger Sugarbush. Maybe I already said hi to Ginger, but he gets two hellos. Chris Topher is here and says, ancient Greeks didn't even know what pants were, but people think they understood the shape of where we live. <laughs> it's good. It's true. A good one. <laughs> Nobody had underwear. <sighs> I mean, really, do you need the Olympics, underwear? The Olympics were done in the nude. What about men and the flapping <laughs> what about the flapping <laughs> no it makes the flapping yeah it, no it's that's it makes me cringe every time it's like because you're gonna get hot and well maybe things flapping around women and men maybe that's not bad for your body but we've been led to believe that it's bad for our body uh, i just can't so think that's why we strap things down i think it can't be comfortable and during long distance running i'm just saying mm, yeah probably there's all sorts of reasons why, I, but I'm not going to get into it this now because it's a family show. Right. So, no, we're not going to. Hey, you know what we should talk about? Let's awkwardly segue into Toronto. Uh, yeah, because that has a lot to do with not wearing underwear. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course or, it does. I, I mean, I, you never, well, like Daniel. Well, wait, he, he like may not hot wear ducks. Yeah, you, know, so, you might think I'm saying hot dogs, and then that could be all tied back to the flapping. Right. But no, hot docs, as in documentaries. Right. In its so, 25th year in Toronto soon. Yep. We are going to be attending the festival, and we're going to get a private screening of the documentary called Behind the Curve. You guys can look that up if you get a chance. It's already generating a buzz up there. You know, there were 3,000 entries. For the festival, only 110, I think, were chosen. And out of those, we're already being talked about in the top 10, which is great. Fantastic. Hope it gets a buyer and hope it goes on to wonderful things, which we won't see a nickel of. Yeah. Uh, by the way, so that everybody knows, we were asked um, independently if we would participate in this documentary. And we were told that it's not a pro nor a con flat earth uh uh, documentary and that the people who were making it were not going to pay us and we would be signing away all of our rights to any future royalties and we both said sure sure <laughs> what? 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 No, but you know, you know that goes you, th that's murphy's law though right there we we say yeah 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 nothing's gonna happen of it and that's like those that's famous hollywood stories mm -hmm. lore throughout time you know the people that signed away the rights to something that was that was massive kind of well, like uh, to me, I mean, we did it just because we want to be involved in any flat earth thing that we can be involved in. And it seemed fun and interesting. And uh, if you've watched the show a little bit, you might have met uh, Daniel and Carolyn, who'd been in the background in videos and uh, who came and filmed here and filmed with Mark and filmed with Bob of Globusters and Jaron and so many other people. Right. And then they put this together and we don't really know exactly. I mean, we know what we did in it. We just... Yeah. You know, we were. We just filming. don't know what the layout's. We just be. don't know the layout, but we we know what it's going to be. It's going to be a um, not a hit piece. 
a look into the lives of flat earthers behind right. the scene, a variety of different flat earthers. Here's Talking about flat earth, attending the conference, everyone at the conference potentially might be in it, uh, experiments, just lots of different things. I don't and know. The, I've heard talk though that this is a reality show and it's been in the works for quite some time. It's no, no, a reality no, no. show. It's, it's a documentary. And the documentary. It, it is just something that will go, it, it, it's gone to a documentary film festival, a big one, but that's where it is. And from there, somebody might take interest in it and decide to do something with it, purchase it, put it somewhere, or get the footage from it that was left on the cutting room floor and do something with it right? or make their own flat earth something or other because they see it as an interesting concept, but it's not a reality show. We've not signed up for a reality show. And we don't have anything to do with the reality show. However, we have been approached to do a reality show. Several. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most the recently uh, yeah. there's one, but you know, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. if it happens, it happens. Uh, great. But the documentary that will, I'm excited about it because win or lose, it creates a buffer between us and the media and gives the media free reign to bring it up whenever they want. And it won't be nearly as strange because then they can say, oh, we're not talking to the Flat Earthers directly. We're going to talk to these filmmakers or we're going to talk to this, whoever distributes it. And there is a high probability if anyone's going to pick it up, it's going to be Netflix because Netflix is the one, the big sponsor, which is up there doing the hot dogs festival. Mm. So, yeah. So maybe Netflix will do something with it. Hey. But once again, it has nothing to do with us making money. We've definitely signed our life away on that willingly and any future money that would ever come from it. Uh, we weren't approached with it as a money-making thing, even for Daniel, who's putting it together. No. I think he's a no, documentary no, was, sort of filmmaker from an intellectual perspective. It was, it was yeah, it's it's more or less, I think, for for Daniel's resume more than yeah. anything else. It's like, look, he he took a chance with this. And that happens with a lot of documentaries and, and young filmmakers where, because he's quite a bit younger than us. Well, me, not so much you. But he <laughs> he's doing this documentary just to kind of put himself on the map. And great. And him and his production team, I wish them the best. And I hope uh, it does wonders for them. And who knows what it'll lead to. But I got this funny feeling that it's going to be because, you know, I saw the list. I saw all the other documentaries that, that are in. Uh, I read through most of them that are in the festival and the ones that are considered in the top 10. And yeah, we may not win the award for the best documentary of the festival because politics. But at the same time, I think it's the most enticing for anyone that wants to distribute it. So I uh, hope it works. Of yes. course, and 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 anyone that went to the conference, just so you know, you might be in it, and you're wondering if you're wondering, you guys can look this up. If you're wondering, oh, hey, I saw myself in the festival, but I didn't sign any release forms. Well, technically, if you're at the festival, I, I can't remember what the the amount of time they can show you. You know, just walking around, crowds are kind of a different thing. As long as they're not talking to you individually, they can they can shoot you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Well, I'm excited to see what what comes of it uh when we go and how they put it all together and what footage they used and i think yeah. it will be a fun inside look at flat earthers off yeah. duty when we're not making videos and that's it um it's not a documentary that proves or disproves flat earth it's not about that no. not at all, not about that no no they in fact we because you remember i was there for a good, at least 75 percent of the shooting and I don't think I was asked once by the team what it, you know, I mean, yeah, we went into a couple concepts, but it, it never turned into a debate. I never sat down with anybody and, and said, okay, it's, you know, because that's not what this is about. This is about right. what, fl who flat earthers are. Right. Are they living in a town near you and <laughs> are they a threat to your existence? The answer to all these is yes. Except for the threat to your existence. Well, we're a threat to the globe's existence, perhaps. They are a danger to themselves and those around them. Especially yeah. when they run with scissors. Yes. <laughs> uh, also, and we, we, do you remember the name of the place? Because we're going to do that meetup in Toronto. Oh, yes, I do. And I'm going to look up the address. I do want to add that Bill Keith is in our live chat and has added that he's putting a video together because Mike Adams, Mike Adams, the health ranger, has smeared flat earth again. And uh, right. Mike has put flat earth in the same category, the same camp as people who deny that there are only two genders. So, you know what? When it comes to trolling at this point, 
I don't. I, how? Why would I care about any trolls? Look, PewDiePie yeah. trolled us twice <laughs> in the same month. So bring it once, on. Yeah, once he does it, uh, who, you know anyone else that's got sixty million subs? No. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, if somebody trolls us, they got a hundred thousand subs. Honest to God, we are so media spoiled to where we're going. Yeah, just whatever. Um, back to the gender thing, just mm -hmm. because it sort of sparked a little interest when I said that, mm -hmm. uh, reading Bill Keith's comment. Um, I think there's only two genders. I think there's people who wish to identify as one or the other, which is fine. That's their life. Um, but some people find that to be not fine. I'm not promoting it. And, um, it's whatever, you know, whatever. But I think there are really only two genders. Right. By saying that there are more than two genders, it isn't it biology that women can give birth if they choose and men can't and that's it boom period end of statement when it comes to genders i don't do, mean identification i mean genders do women even really at this stage in the game do they even need men <laughs> to be honest no i mean i let, let's be let's be frank here if of you, course we need each other in tw what is, uh, yeah i know you're being you're being kind but no i mean let's I've face it a, if a you a couple of bad experiences with men before but generally if, all my experiences have been very positive so if, if yeah. you had if every city had a well-stocked sperm bank <laughs> Oh no! I'm just saying, no. women have the upper hand in in that case because technically yeah, yeah. they could just keep it going, and they could. Okay, technically yes, but where would the sperm come from? Well, okay, let's well, say I mean, it look, created in a lab. A lot of freaking sperm. You could keep that going for a long, long, long time. What a gross place that would be. <laughs> oh, it's not so bad. <laughs> Anyway, I just um, mean working in a in a place like a giant sperm bank. That would be your job. Just imagine if you met somebody. It's like, hi, my name is Mark Sargent. I'm a flat earther, and I am the originator of flat earth clues. And what do you do? And the person said their name is so and so, and they they work for a sperm bank. That would be really weird. Sorry, Someone's got to do it though. I, I just wondered if anyone ever used sperm bank as a porn name. <laughs> It's too obvious, but I've never thought of it until just now. Oh my gosh, I forgot. This is a family family show. show. Even right. if okay, the sperm so creates babies. Uh, awkwardly the egg, transition still... to Toronto, where we're going to the festival. And <laughs> wait, how did we get there? I don't know. I think we it's took your like fault. Four or five lefts because and then... you're a man. <laughs> See? See? No, joking. I don't have those thoughts about men at all. I don't have any negative thoughts about men. Or women, just individuals. Wow, I see, I do. I, I I think there's individuals who are men and women who are horrible people and uh, awesome people. I think I judge case by case. I personally think women should rule the world. All right. And maybe in the next version they will. Can't we be any, can, that cannot do any the worse. Amazon than women. women. How'd that work out? What like the Wonder Woman? Like Wonder Woman. <sighs> it's tricky. <laughs> anyway, but, but they, don't, they, don't even, they don't even need a sperm bank. They just they just mold people out of clay. All women. This, well, this is interesting. Page forty two in our live chat says that men have nipples because they started out as female, and all babies in the womb do start off as female. So mm. maybe we're the original humans, and you guys should be our slaves. <laughs> see, see. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I think there's some of those uh, uh, recessive impulse that's in there. <sighs> uh, well, okay, well, one last thing, and then we'll, we'll seriously we'll move on to Toronto. And that is part of me thought years ago, it's like, because I always believe in, 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 in interesting plots. What if the world was actually created by women as a test for men? Hmm. Well, there's a whole lot of women that are failing that test. As well as men. I think more men than women. Anyway, Toronto on the 30th, I believe. Yes. We are going to be doing a meetup. So we're arriving on the 29th and we're going to do a meetup at the. Oh, it's a place called Spin. Let me look up the address. I was attracted to it due to the name Spin. It is a ping pong bar slash casual restaurant in Toronto near the uh, entertainment district i think it's called in downtown toronto yeah spin cool. we're going to be playing ping pong at our meetup right on 
So yeah, uh, you're cool. going to make a promo for it soon. We're, I'm going to we'll make a promo for it. I, I just want to make sure we announce it on the show to be right. on the same page. Okay, so it's going to be spin. I will do a promo for it in the next couple of days. I've been doing, I did two more promos this morning. And that is going to be, I think, what, 6 p.m.? Yes, we're going to do it at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to probably have to book a table for us. They have a kitchen. They have some nice food. They have nice drinks. Uh, beer and wine or, you know, whatever, soft drinks or water, or whatever you like. Um, they've got music in there as well. And, but it's not super loud. There's not like a live band, which I love live bands, but we all, we all want to talk and hang out. There's tables to sit at. And I think ping pong is fun. We can hit a ball around, which is kind of metaphorically what we're doing all of the time. And I like ping pong. I'm not any good at it, but I like ping pong. So. All right then. Otherwise anyway. known as otherwise known as table tennis. Yes, table tennis. Yes. And uh, well, yeah, well. it's in Toronto. And I'm going to look up here the address very quickly. Although, of course, when you make your promo, it will be listed. The in there. Yeah. I it's, won't even mention we'll, it now. We'll but they do have a website. Um, we are spin.com. Just look up spin ping pong and it'll come out. Spin ping pong, Toronto, and the entertainment. Oh. Just and I want to thank everybody who gave us wonderful suggestions. We got email suggestions, okay. comments on videos, suggesting places where we could, you know, meet up. And some of them were fantastic and wonderful, but then we kind of balanced out and right. we just wanted to have, I want, on having an activity and a meetup at the same time would be fun. Right. You don't need I, to play I ping pong. I really but. appreciated the exotic dance club suggestions. That's an but, activity. But realized that they were just too loud. Right. And they don't take dollar tips anymore. And the drinks are overpriced. <laughs> and who wants to buy a twenty dollar hamburger? Let's be let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but I did check out all the websites and the corresponding links to all those websites that were sent. Yes. We yeah. appreciate those people who try to help us out by sending things and we ended up going with spin. Yeah. That's where it's gonna be. I'm gonna get my forehand and backhand ready. <laughs> Oh, and I, I bought, uh, I, I had, I, I don't buy much anymore because I've got a lot of clothes. I bought some shoes just for going to play ping pong. No, they're not special ping pong shoes, but they're Converse. I already have Converse. They're high tops. I already have Converse high tops. Oh but my God. these have a little platform inside, so they kind of have a built up heel. Oh my God. This is it's just, just so, this... it, it sounds so 70s. And ping pong reminds me of you play ping pong in the basement of like your friend's house or your parents' house, you know, in the 70s when you're in high school, if you're that old anyway. But ping pong, it just seems Everybody like Everybody had a ping pong table in the basement. Yeah, it's just very 70s. Fold, to me. Folds up. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, oh, we have Tommy Rogers putting the address in ping pong, spin ping pong bar, 461 King Street West, Toronto. And okay. that is, that's pretty, pretty close, close to, to where we're uh, going to be. Yeah, we're be anyway yeah. for hot docs. The hot, yeah, the theater we're going to for this premiere is on the corner of King Street West and John Street. Indeed. So, and so, we, cool. and so we are going to be seeing it, and I know some people will probably be seeing it before us. We're going to be seeing it on the second we, privately at with the film team. I'm sorry, on the first. <laughs> Okay, 30th is meetup. First is the private screening with you and I and the team and hopefully some alcohol. And then on the second, we will be seeing it at the theater mm -hmm. and then hanging out with some people afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then on the third, I think we fly back. It'll be really, really fun. And if you're still in Toronto, there's one more showing with the last showing is actually on the last day is going to be on the 6th. I believe yeah. at 8.30. We're going to an afternoon showing. I am more than excited for the whole thing, all of it. Yeah. You know, just, you know, hanging out with you, uh, hanging out with Carolyn and Daniel, uh, seeing the documentary, the yeah. private screening part, then going to spin. Somebody asked me what size Converse I wear. In Converse, which is a weird thing, I wear men's size seven. So why are you asking that's the size I wear in Converse, men's size seven, you know, um, but these are women's. So that is a woman's size nine. I don't know about you. My size in shoes varies. I wear an eight, eight and a half or nine. Depends oh. on the style of the shoe, if it's got a heel or if it's got no heel. That's can, in American sizing. So I can top you when it comes to weirdness with shoes. 40, 41, I think in mm -hmm. 
European sizing, and then there's UK sizing. I can wear a six, six and a half, seven in the UK size. My feet are uh, not large and they're not small. Uh, my sister and my mom uh, had, my sister had a size eight feet and mine are more like eight and a half or nine, but definitely fit, fitting of my height, which is yeah. five, seven, five, six and a half. But they're also interesting because they're webbed. Oh yeah. Well, don't tell anybody. Oh, right. <laughs> Actually, I do think that there are humans who have webbed toes. I've heard there are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There absolutely are. And humans who have six toes on yeah. one foot. Humans who have six toes, people that can pick up things with their feet. I can't do that. Do you have those sorts of feet? No. Well, no, actually I can't. I do have double jointed feet or Is it toes. prehensile kind of? <laughs> so, no, I do have double jointed toes, but the the interesting thing, and I did not know this until I was in my 20s, probably should have figured that out because when I was getting some higher end dress shoes, which is one of my feet, my left foot is a 13, my right foot is 12 and a half. That's very common, actually. Most people have the uh, their dominant hand. Uh, that it, sometimes that foot can even weirdly be smaller, and your yeah. non dominant hand can be bigger. Is that you? Uh, I no, my hands are pretty much identical. Uh, oh, I, I mean, I don't mean by hand size. I mean by what if, if you're right handed, sometimes your left foot can be bigger. I'm right handed. I'm left footed. There you go. I'm right eyed i'm right eared wow that's weird yeah. but it is true that most no, people left eyed left discrepancy eared. of about a half size in their foot it's yeah. normal absolutely normal which so. is problematic if you're ever wandering in the desert because like a limp if you walk long enough if you're you'll eventually veer off into a circle <laughs> No, it's true. They they absolutely tell these. They go never if you're injured, never ever walk into an area where there's no landmarks. But also, it has nothing to do with having one foot half size bigger than the other. I no, I I'm pretty sure it does. I think it it's not as it's not as bad as like having an ankle or a leg injury, right. but it would be the same sort of thing. Well, we'll have to all all keep that in mind. I know, if right? That ever happens. I am so full of useless aesthetic trivia. <laughs> That is, I'll have to look that up. In fact, somebody was challenging, in effect, it was D-I-T-R-H earlier when you had said in the original Olympics that they did them naked and D-I-T-R-H said, challenge. And then no, no, said, it's oh, true. No, it's, it's true. Uh, look it, it up. Is, it is true. The freaking Greeks. Should that surprise anyone? That they, I mean, no, you can, the, the, all, the, all the drawings and paintings. No, no, no. no they were. I had the orgies, the vomitorium, and then the naked running. Well, no, I mean, the, the why would you wear clothes if you were doing athletic events back then? There hmm. was like it was perfectly whatever. They had also, total parties. you, no, no, you they didn't. also <laughs> walk in circles if you are blindfolded. Really? Yep. Does Not that anyone would, but would a globe believer say that's because of the spin of the earth? <laughs> I don't know. No, but they're weird circles too. They're like, they're Loops. like, yeah, they're, they're, they just keep going in on each other to where, yeah, it's, yeah, l weird, stupid. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we've got some crazy stuff going on in our live chat now. Uh, Rob Morrill says some people have longer second toes, some shorter than big toes. I have one of each. Oh, that's All interesting. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All my toes are in normal descending order. My second toe to the big is not larger longer some people's are and you had your fangs filed down yeah well yeah. i have to do it regularly because they grow back <laughs> uh, more. i also we should mention the canadian conference which is coming up you know we should probably oh mention the uk conference because that thing's coming up here in seconds two weeks. yeah exactly two weeks. and martin leakey flatter the british is going to be there and um I know oh, he's been very, uh, very yeah, excited that he he did uh, improvements to his teeth because he's going to be doing public speaking. Isn't Dave um, Murphy going to that thing too? Uh, Dave, Dave Murphy is going to be there and uh, a bunch of people are going to be there. I know. I don't uh, have the, the site pulled up. But I do hear, I, I imagine we'll hear about it eventually, the debate that they're going to have with physicists. They yes. actually grab some university physicists to debate them. So eventually we're going to see how that went. And that's going to not be, um, it will be a live debate via um, the internet as opposed to sitting in the same room, I think, right? 
I don't remember. I can't remember if they were going to come show up personally or not. I could be wrong about that. I will, we'll eventually hear about it. I mean, Robbie Davidson's going to go over. He's going to attend it. Yes. I was going to go too. It didn't work out time-wise with other things I have going. Hot Docs is one of them. Right. Oh, well, yeah. Talk about weird. Yeah. yeah the whole Hot Docs thing, the way that came in, it, that's almost fate. And I didn't plan that because I didn't know that hot dogs was even happening mm -hmm. when it was other things that I had going on. So, right. right. So too much yeah. traveling lately. We've got uh, we've got the uh, conference in November in Denver coming up. Right. Flat Earth conference. And well, well, heck, we haven't. I haven't booked my tickets yet for Edmonton. Did Did I book mine? In, I don't I think I remember. Ed, Edmonton for Flat Earth Canada. What date? What days of the week is that? That's August fifteenth and sixteenth. Yeah, something like that. Okay, there's a lot of events happening soon when it comes. Yeah, to so in Edmonton, Canada, we'll 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 just plenty of time. I'll, we'll give people. So if you're up up in Canada, or if you want to go to Canada, the Flat Earth Conference International Conference Canada version is beginning happening in Edmonton, and that's coming up in August. First, we got to get through the Toronto thing, so May, June, July. Yeah, we got plenty of time. And also. Um, Back in 2016, my gosh, in 2016, uh, I started what I called Flat Earth Day. Do you remember that? And I did mm -hmm. my first mixer, I called it, which I had a whole, a whole, you know, dinner and everything for people. And then I did right. it another the, the following year. But Flat Earth Day or Earth Day this year is Sunday, April 22nd. Right. And I'm not doing anything this year. It's just too close to all the other things I've got going on in my right. personal life, as well as like hot dogs, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, a number of people are suggesting uh, street activism on that day. And one of those people is D Marble. So fun. Uh, Check his channel for more info on that. Cool. And D Marble's also done a rap song, which is on his channel. Uh, yeah. D Marble's everywhere. Yeah, so he's great. Plus, he was in Korea. He's really big in Korea. I hear. <laughs> Seriously, he's huge over there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> no, that may happen. I'm not kidding. I'm I'm not saying that actually to, as a joke. It's because he went over and he did really really well. So D Marble could be a famous celebrity because he's got that spark yep yep i've got high hopes for demo yeah he's awesome well i mean the guy's got a mega large channel boom you know yeah and he's doing he's great doing, things with he's it do, he's doing great i he's hope also that, got a backup channel too which is a smart with, thing to do a lot of people are doing backup channels lately with all the youtube censorship if he, if he becomes really big does he give up the van life hmm, no i don't think so because that's part of his part heart and soul or do you just park the van? In fact, where does he park the van when he goes on plane trips? That's a very good question. Does Probably he park somewhere it at the airport safe. and actually maybe. Or is he like a shuttle or a? Well, check out his backup channel. It's D period Marble Live. D Marble Live. Right. So check that out for his. Backup I, by channel. the way, I am still waiting. You you probably caught this. Remember my Flat Earth Clues director. You waiting cut. on a on a friend? <laughs> okay, just because you did that. I am going to say uh, okay. One, I'm, I'm not still a big waiting. Rolling Stones fan, but okay. I am waiting. <laughs> not huge. I do not have their catalog. I like some of their songs. Sure, me too. I like some. But of them. but I, but sorry. Every time I hear them, it reminds me of that silly Stephen Wright joke, where he goes, you know, the Stones can't believe they're doing it after all these years. I watch them whenever I can. Fred and Barney. <laughs> Somebody in the live chat said that my hair looked like Wilma Flintstone. So there we go. <laughs> there you go. No, oh, no, by no. the way, breaking news, courtesy of Daniel Reza in our live chat, who says D Marble just fused with Bilu and is now going by the name D Mar Bilu. <laughs> that does not roll off the tongue. <laughs> it's funny though. Kind of. Uh, that's no. What's better is my combination services group corporation which i'm founding which yes. is going to be air uber grinder air uber grinder all right that's it's it. got everything in one package it'll drive you to the house and hook you up mm -hmm. yeah. right of course probably not in the right way <laughs> so well, for some anyway for some yeah hey all god's children <laughs> not judging so okay two things real quick for those people who have sent me a bunch of emails about the flat earth clues director's cut which was not just yellow flagged, it was yellow hate speech flagged. That's nuts. I know. 
Um, and and I don't even know. It's like the first time I've ever gotten one of those. That's like, what are you talking about? This thing's been out for like eighteen months, and it's and also been only... broken up on many other people's. Oh, yeah, everybody's got flat Earth clues somewhere, way or another. Are you kidding? That what? Why would you, why would you do this? And somebody a troll tried to flag it as inciting religious violence. The thing is, is that when I found flat Earth clues and. That was in March of 2015. Didn't right. have a channel then. You just was minding my own business, was looking up conspiracy stuff and stumbled upon it. Right. I, you know, listened to your clues. I don't even remember what, what was the first clue that I came upon. And then I went back and got the old ones and then was waiting, you know, oh, edge of my seat for a new clues. If there were any hate speech in any of it, I would have clicked off because I wasn't ready to accept oh, anything no. like that at that point. The way you delivered the clues was very mellow, very kind, nice, intelligent, and gave you a lot of room to breathe, meaning you didn't lay it all out point by point specifically. Right. It gave you a chance to use your own mind and discernment and then do your own research. So no hate speech. I, Sorry. I preach it to this day. You know, do your own research and ask questions, but for whatever reason, some troll decided why he went after that instead of the original clues. I have no idea. It's literally I don't even have a yellow flag right now. I haven't had a yellow flag in months. This is this is a little bit higher grade than that. So the appeal process takes longer and you can only appeal once you appeal, give them your reason. I said, there's no offensive content. So, and it's just a reproduction of my collection of my older works. So I'd love to know who did it. Never probably going to find out who flagged it, whatever. Not like, not that it matters. I mean, there's so many other videos. There's clues have been spread out so many different places what's what are you gonna do with director's cut was literally an afterthought it only had a hundred thousand hits like a lot of people it's like hundred thousand hits is a lot eh. not not compared to some things so anyway it, it's so we'll weird see. that somebody did that but then again there are people who dislike others in flat earth and they do that sort of thing and it will work itself out one way or the other it will i mean the the copyright strikes remember i got four strikes one from george nori one from an Indian rapper. And then one. with the George Nori, it was video that you were on his show and you put it on your channel. Well, I didn't, though. That was just it. In fact, George Nori, out of all the interviews I've done, George Nor uh, Coast to Coast Radio is the only one that makes you sign a release form that says you cannot put it anywhere. They're really, really strict about it. So what I did was I made a 60-second trailer that's oh, just that's me. that's right. You me talking train. saying hey just so you know i can't put this up <laughs> on my channel so go to george nori's site or do whatever you can to get it and they struck that you're right i got that wrong yeah the intern was lazy he's like going you know because it said coast to coast interview but he didn't even look at the time and so i wrote him back and i looked and said look jack knockers 59 <laughs> seconds is not a freaking interview jack so, knockers yeah <laughs> Trademark, <laughs> DM, <laughs> patent pending. The uh, seriously, that's what they did, and it's like you guys are idiots, and they overturned it. So yeah, the last one I ever got was uh, well, I got one from Trailer Park Boys, mm -hmm. and which was was just stupid. I claimed fair use on that. The one that bugged me the most though wasn't George Nori; it was freaking Buzzfeed. Was it the <laughs> one time I tried to copyright strike you for putting my video on your channel? <laughs> That was you. <laughs> and then you struck me back for mm. having you on my show when you <laughs> volunteered to do it. And yeah. then, you know. No, no. If, if BuzzFeed <laughs> would have fought me at all, I would have said, look, asshats, <laughs> what you did was- What was the other thing you said? Jack knocker. Jack knocker. <laughs> What you did was you, you you struck me, you struck my channel for me. That's in fact, I was going to write them back. I go, okay, go to three minutes in your video. You see that guy right there? Do you, do you recognize him? Yeah. It's the channel you're actually striking. So whatever. And I know they can, they could say what they can say is like, we got your permission to use your image, you know, because they asked, they said mm -hmm. video, uh, audio uh, waiver. But at the same time, you didn't get our permission to use it. It's like, uh, fair use, screw you. So that was it. So we'll see.
Um, I do want to mention that Gary John Heather, who's putting together the convention in the UK, has said that contrary to what I said when I was saying that the 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 in the debate it might be on you know the internet, it's going to be really live and in person. He says the astrophysicists will be with us in person at the convention, and that it, it, convention, yes, there will be three of them. So cool, boom. Hope it goes well. It will go well. Uh, Peanuts Clark just donated two dollars in the super chat. Who's and he said, "We are the elite, and we love you guys." <laughs> well, we're we our numbers are, uh, which is why I titled the Strange World episode a week ago what I did, which was there are millions of us, millions, and Fox News and all the other. I mean that that stat story has really gotten some traction. Uh, look, if we if we have thirty three percent of the eighteen to twenty four year olds in this country and. Uh, I, yeah, they said like single digits of all, going all the way up to any age range. That's millions because you can remember every percentage point just in the United States, just in the U.S., every single percentage point is three million people, hmm. over three million. People. So ten percent is thirty-three million, and thirty percent is well of the eighteen to twenty-four year olds. It's a lot, huge amounts, which is why it's trending so well, and it's not going away. That line that the one guy said in Fox News, which I love so much, the comedian he had next to me, he's like, look, this seems to be, you know, is this thing's not going away. It's picking up steam. And it's it's concerning a lot of people now. Well, well some would say, you know, NASA that. doesn't even know you exist. You know, yep. Bill Nye yes, they and don't. Uh, all the rest, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, they they don't If they know about you at all, meaning flat earthers, they just laugh at you. But I beg to differ because oh, yeah. I do see them changing things and, you know, and, and dancing to our tune, as the expression goes. Yeah. Uh, not that we're pulling the strings and making them dance like puppets, not at all, because we basically have them closed down completely. Right. But they are mm, molding things and changing things to cover up their lies right. and putting out propaganda even more than normal to, uh, I don't know, uh, brainwash people even more away from flat earth. I challenged them a long time ago. I, I want them to look, here's what's going to go down. If you don't address this, if you don't get ahead of this thing, you're going to be in real, real trouble because we have the numbers. We have the masses. You were the ones that created that that thought out there, which was the general public should not delve into science, leave science to the scientists. And when they did that, all of a sudden they create we we attach to that. And now fine, you don't you want to address this? Fine. We will run around your flanks at speed and like we have been doing, and we will win by attrition. So by all means, keep doing what you're doing. That's totally fine. You don't want to even go on TV if Neil doesn't want to make another appearance on Comedy Central. Fine. We will we will just burn you into the ground. We are here. We used to be just one tiny fruit fly, and now we've <laughs> <laughs> morphed into bazooka. Oh, come on. We're yeah. a juggernaut at this point. Everybody knows it. <laughs> Every Everybody knows it. They just, they're afraid. Uh, I mean, producers are now, you know, now just like kind of stumbling over each other. And after this thing finally gets to the next level of mainstream, uh, you're you're not gonna be able to stop it. It's gonna yeah, be such a cool. We're here. We're loud. We're proud, and we are uh, not stopping. We are continuing to. Uh, what is it called when you you run at speed toward a, uh, a charge. castle? You know, at a castle. Um, Assault charge. You know World War Z, the movie World War Z with the zombies, and they were attacking and climbing over a wall. Oh, overrun. Yeah, we are yeah. we're we're about ready to overrun them at this. Yeah, point. yeah. There's seriously, there aren't enough scientists, and they aren't putting up a fight. And then they they're not even real. Bill Nye's not a real scientist. No. I mean, is Neil deGrasse Tyson a real quote unquote scientist? The, remember the five he runs questions. a planetarium. Remember he when he wears the, uh, the heck out of a vest? But that's the the, the German television team. By the way, was did I talk? Was it last week or was it? the week or was it this week flat earth time i have no idea no when i was when i when i was talking to the russians did i tell you about that last yeah 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 i week. think i did yes it was, that was last week okay yes the, there was a german team that wanted me to debate a physicist from georgetown university and some people already know this story and they said hey come up with five quick scientific questions that we can record on video and send to him and we'll see you know how he does 
And I came up with five scientific questions and the man folded like a freaking card table. Hmm. That was it. He was like, nope, that's it. This debate is not going to happen. It's like, really? I would have thought that any physicist would have been like, oh, this guy, you know, he's just a chucklehead. You know, I can I can outthink him into the dirt. And after he's <laughs> I after can outthink he... him into the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I love it. I, I do have a few sound bites from time to time. But but he didn't. He, he was like once he saw the questions, he could not deal with it. And they were simple questions. They were you were the uh, uh, the long distance photography the eclipse of the moon, the power of the vacuum of, of space, the moon temperature and the Van Allen belts. Mm -hmm. Those five simple questions of like short paragraphs, like address this. He could not do it. And so now what do you got? You got nothing, you got uh, which nothing. is why my challenge, I, you know, I, I do that challenge now at the beginning of every strange world show. Anyone in science, you want to put me up against a panel and turn me into a human academic punching bag? Go ahead and try. Fly me down. I'll sit there and I'll let you even take the first shots. And then I'll destroy you. It'll be over. And you'll have to go <laughs> home crying. All right. Open, crawling into a very expensive bottle of scotch. Exactly. So. Um, Chris Monk Seeley says, in an isolated system, entropy can only increase. World War Z quote. Mm, it's good. Uh, so uh, World War Z was a good zombie movie. I don't know. I like that ever. movie actually. Um, it's good. part of it scared me in a way, and I don't mean that I think there's really zombies and all of that stuff, but it made me think about people in general as zombies, um, as people as followers, and how people in that mindset can do anything, including kill and destroy others. Right. We see it all the time, or they can do anything, as in completely believe in nasa and all the lies There's a it's sort of the same thing really it's a zombie mentality all this zombie talk that's been going on for how many years now 15 years i don't know how long people have been super into zombies there's always been zombie movies etc uh dawn of the dead night of the living dead and all of that but it's really heated up the past several years and why why is that is that because there will be a way in which the uh, that, that you get bitten by a zombie and then you become one. Not really. It's a it's a way to look at the state of our society. I think the yeah. I I could go into zombies forever. Or what's the joke? <laughs> Come on, zombies have been done to death. But <laughs> the uh, brains <laughs> rim shot. So well, the thing about zombies is they want to eat your brain. It's almost like they don't have a brain. And that is the, the people who hold on to the globe are kind of zombies. They're followers and they're in mass, they're in a pack, and they rely upon the support of others to hold themselves up. One zombie alone, boom, you can take them out with a good headshot. But a large pack of them, it's kind of hard. And I think humans can go the way of zombies if we don't watch what we're doing and pay attention and stop relying. We need to stop relying upon scientists and, you know, the authority because that's where we get zombified, brainwashed. I agree. I agree. I want to say hi to Flat Accord Music and Morgan Ellis and Cat's Eyes. And uh, what else is happening? Hello to Spherical Cow and uh, Helio Skeptic and Rob Morrill and Ute. And uh, what else? What else? The zombie apocalypse, according to I Call BS, says the CDC has zombie apocalypse listed on their website like it's a real thing. It would it would not be. I, I have to chime in. I'm sorry. I know way too much about zombies, mm -hmm. which is it would not be your standard zombie apocalypse, night of the living dead, dawn of the dead, day of the dead, blah, blah, blah. It would more uh, be like again one of the most realistic zombie movies of all time 28 days later which uh, it, they I like really, that one too yeah those weren't really zombies as much as they it was a bloodborne disease right. that generated a fit of rage that was that that promoted oh you see that with the globe believers that same kind of fit of rage as in 20 yeah, yeah but globe believers wouldn't you know <laughs> rip you, rip, literally <laughs> rip you limb from limb <laughs> some uh, no, I mean, try they might, but I doubt it. The, the Globe Believers, remember, we, we've gotten a few death threats here and there, but nothing super scary. 
Uh, you know, nobody, nobody came at us at the conference. We've, I've never heard of a meetup where somebody got violent. And everybody was so polite at every one of my meetups and totally happy to be there. Everyone was super awesome at, yeah. you know, like you said, at the conference, no issues with yeah. anything like that. No, I mean, that's because you're not fighting the people. You're fighting the idea mm -hmm. when you're a globalist. Yeah, you, kill the messenger doesn't apply to Flat Earth. You look at the Flat Earth and you go, they're dumb. But then you have to look beyond it. And it's like, okay, Flat Earth's dumb too. And then you start going after Flat Earth. Nobody, yeah, of course, there's some squabbles here and there where people attack, like Jason A., Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they'll they'll try to attack individuals or groups, but for the most part, it is it is the idea. And how do you attack an idea? Not easily, mm -hmm. especially an idea whose time has come, like flat Earth. Yes. Hello to Cami, and hi to plant based comedian who is here, who says hi. It's flat Earth, Bernie, and Trump. <laughs> so, if you want to find out more about that, go to plant based comedian. Um, we've got the Sute. We are dancers in vibration, sending big love to all. Uh, Davey Little is here, who says we all live in a big open jail anyhow. <laughs> D-Wave Surfer is here. Um, I saw Paul on the plane earlier, and I might have mentioned Paul on the plane, but hello. He called uh, to the show. Wizlaws is here. Um, Dan Cooper as well. Respice, F-I-N-E-M, I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, a very, 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 very cool person and a very, very, very cool channel, so go check that out. Um, I do want to say hi to someone whose name passed by so quick that I didn't say it earlier, Flat Earth Subgenius Society. Uh, Flat Earth Subgenius has changed his channel name to Flat Earth Subgenius Society. So way to make it complicated. <laughs> right. <laughs> Flat Earth and other hot potatoes, society. <laughs> what was that thing? Something knocker? What was it again? Jack knocker. Jack knocker society. Mm -hmm. Just put society on the end of everything. Jack Dr. Society. <laughs> Ass hat society. <laughs> well, we know a lot of members of that. Hi to Jonathan Roberts and Sharif Shalan and Nick Terziski. And uh, Timaeus has given me the correct pronunciation. It's Respike Finam. Respike Finam. Now I really seem like I'm saying it wrong, but maybe that's it because Timaeus, he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, hello to Alan Holman and everybody here. Juan Torres says, first time in the chat, Patricia. Hey, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. The chat is very fun. The secret show when Mark and I are on together differs than other things on my channel because it's very lighthearted. It's not an interview show and we just, we just talk. In fact, in the eyes of Carrie, who has a channel, Four Eyes to See, who's just joined us now, she says, flat family, which is kind of what this, this is about. It's not easy being a flat earther and it's nice to come to this chat and there are other chats that are similar and just have a really cool chill out, hang out. Everybody's happy and everybody's greeting each other. That happens in Globusters as well on a much larger scale, of course. But Oh, hi to Hard Candy Mittens from Mansville, New York um, and Baz Baz and uh, da -da -da, Paladin One who says this is a great show. It's a fun show. Not sure about great, but uh, Arwen says there's a famous Dutch painting called The Potato Eaters. Hmm. Could be, a, could be dangerous for me and my show. Well, only Arwen <laughs> would know that. I know. Uh, so, I don't know. Have we, have we wiped out all the stuff that we've got? Uh, we have more? I, think there, I think there's one more little thing, and that is if... You remember my little trick about how, because I haven't gotten verified yet, you know, back in the day, let me tell a quick story. Back in the day. When dinosaurs roamed the earth or maybe not. Well, honestly, <laughs> really? Seriously? We can't all be 29. <laughs> so back in the day when when you could get verified with only 10,000 subs, they gave out check marks like they were candy. Nowadays, you have to get 100,000 subs. to. Oh, to get darn. I missed out. Check. Yeah, well. You have to get 100,000 subs to, to get a check mark nowadays. And we've only got one flat earther that's got his check mark. But a couple are, are bearing down, like Rob Skiba. I, I don't know if he's applied for his yet. And Jaron's going to be able to apply for his real soon. And there are others out there. So, uh, and I, I, so what I did was I found somebody that, you know, had a little, they figured out the little HTML symbol for the little check mark. And I started attaching them to the ends of all my videos. So it's like a little subliminal cool little thing where people you know people do that with some titles most people don't 
Dorje Daka did the same thing. I know exactly. The green I check have... mark. I'm like, how do you get that? <laughs> I may have stolen from him. So, I asked you, how'd you get that? <laughs> the reason I mentioned that is because before the show was opening, you said that, hey, your avatar on YouTube now moves. Yes. It's now and animated. You can see that right now. When can they see it move? When what? Well, when did you see it? I saw it when you and I connected to start this live stream. Right. Right. It's, it's so you gonna... would have to turn off your camera now. Oh, do it. So we no, can no, 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 no. Work then? No. Why? If I did, if I killed the camera. Yeah. Let's see. Here, let's see what happens. Ready? Can you see it? Or do I have oh. to talk and do stuff? We see it. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so that's just flat Earth with a cool little animation behind it. It's it's meant to attract attention, right? So I like here's, it. Yeah, it's it reminds kind of fun. me of your microphone, actually. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of a cool little animation that I grabbed from something and then just kind of overlaid some other crap on top of it. So here's here's why it's cool. If you guys do this, you can basically what I'm saying is now you can use your if you have a Google account because well lots of people most everyone does because they're tied together. All you have to do now you can use instead of a picture for your avatar, you can use a GIF, an animated GIF. Oh, and you say okay, well I would want to do that because 99% of the YouTubers don't have animated GIFs yet. It hasn't it hasn't swept through everywhere. We haven't even gotten barely gotten off the ground. So, so now it's cool. And then pretty soon it's going to be terribly annoying. So get in while it's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to help spread the flat earth stuff, make people, you know, show your stuff, find a little gift for your little avatar. And then when people see it, it's like, oh, because right now everyone's eyes are going to be drawn to it. Now, you're not going to see it in every screen when you're in YouTube, because that would just be too annoying. But you will see it when you roll over certain stuff. So now, because you still have your camera off, it shows. And if you're ever on a hangout where you, all the cameras are off, boom, that's what's going to be shown. Exactly. Yeah, you'll see an anime. And you can, I, as far as I know, this this particular GIF was, how big was this thing? You don't, I mean, this runs about 12 seconds. Mine's mm -hmm. a little longer than most GIFs. I just figured out how far could I push it. And in size, it's only about, it's not even 20 megs. And you, so you don't have to make super, super small GIFs. This one, this one was a, a full blown. I ripped some of the animation out of a movie, so it was just like my second or third attempt at, at messing with this stuff. So yeah, anyway, have fun. Well, with it. Um, I'm going to turn my camera off for a moment, and when I do, I get my space woman, yep. uh, which is a, I believe, 1960s space suit. We put the name Steer on it and put my face in it. So yeah, that's so, cool. There you I go. mean, it's I, I don't ever change it. Although I changed how I look all the time. So it's like, that's outdated. You grew your eyebrows out thicker. Yes, I did. But, you know, women do that, changing their appearance things sometimes. Um, but I, right. I don't really want to change it because it just was so hard to get it as is at this point anyway. So, but I would like it if it moved. That'd be cool. Yeah. So have fun. Again, I just ran into it. Some kid had some rabbit that was half rabbit, half human torch. And I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. I, well, I did not know that YouTube had allowed that yet. And of course, they weren't going to make a big announcement. Oh my gosh, were... we've got bad news. And here's the bad news, because I wasn't looking at the live chat at that moment. Everyone is saying, no image for Mark. It's a black screen. Patricia, what you're seeing is not coming through for us. So therefore, that's weird. It didn't come through. Anyway, it was this it... cool, swirly thing. Sorry, guys. Wait, why wouldn't it come through on the live stream? I don't know. Maybe when it's actually made its way from Google Hangouts, where we are here doing the live show, to YouTube, maybe it'll be there. I don't know. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe. Ah, eh, we'll and figure so, it out. Right. Anyway, so the the point is, is you can add, you can change now. You can now make gifts a part well, of. Well, if your... it does that, meaning give a black screen, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I'm sure. Look, no, you could see it during the hangout, and I could sure, see sure. it. Very true. So somebody's. I wonder, could people see my? Space woman, please answer in the chat. So we want to see if it's the GIF that's got an issue, or is it any time we turn our camera off, it's just black? Mm -hmm. I'll wait for an answer on that. Yeah. Either way, it's it's a fun little thing to attract attention. And uh, uh, if flat earthers do it first, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, King TL, hello by the way, says that mine worked and yours did not. Hmm. Uh, that's so. weird because it's a video feed. Why but would somebody it says you need to present Mark? But you know, the thing is, is that when you're doing a live chat 
and you have all the cameras off, not a live chat, excuse me, a live show with all the cameras off, you would uh, not want to have to be the one presenting. It wouldn't make any sense. So I don't anyway, know. point is, guys, <laughs> you, can, you can use gifts now for your avatars. So if you're clever at all and there's there's wonderful little gift converters online, you don't have to necessarily do anything fun, but, uh, you know, do do something. Any anything helps when it when it comes to our cause. So. Um, Zoe, if be here in love, I don't know if I said hi to you, Zoe. Even if I don't say hi to somebody, I, I, there's a very good chance I think I did, and I consider it to be a hello because I'm not ignoring anybody at all. It's just it moves fast. Hello to Ranty and Rancid Punks Crypto. <laughs> wow, that's a name that has a lot of that behind is exactly it. <laughs> roll off the tongue. Animus, Animus is here as well in our live chat. Uh, Still Earth Journey says hello from Portland. And Zane is here. Zane uh, is answering to some of the chat that was happening a little earlier before we had that GIF conversation about 5G. Zane says, the simple truth is that we don't need another stronger network. We don't really need self-driving cars that need 5G. We don't need more, more, more all the time. Like, uh, like the Masons, as he says, make you think. Um, oh, hold on. Dan Cooper is saying 5G is wicked, not the same as 4G at all. It's really 2G. 5G is powerful and it is weaponized. A lot of people are talking about that. I really don't know for sure. There's lots of things I don't know for sure. I have, I have, a, a, I have a feeling about things and I have a feeling 5G is not for our benefit, but I won't go any farther to say that it's meant to, you know, kill us from the inside out. I have no idea. Um, I want to say hello to Flat Earth Female, uh, who's in our live chat. And I encourage anybody who's here in the live chat to give the video a thumbs up. And, you know, because I have so many people I consider friends watching, uh, and then later it goes to YouTube and nobody comments because you've already been here commenting. If you would, come back and leave a comment, any comment at all. Maybe we should have a keyword for people to leave. Wouldn't that be a fun new addition to the secret show? A keyword? Yeah, like a word we could say during the show. So when you come back after the videos made it to YouTube from being live to being recorded, come back and leave a comment. If nothing more, the word should be, so you pick the word, Mark. One of those phrases that you said earlier. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, Jack We're so Knocker? far into the show that maybe we should do this at the beginning of the show, but we'll try it now and then later we'll do it at the beginning of the show. Yes, what is the, what's the secret phrase? The secret phrase is Jack Knocker. Jack Knocker. So, <laughs> Bill Keith says, say the secret word on the secret show. Yep, we're going to have a secret phrase if I remember to do it. Jack Knocker. <laughs> so, when you come back and leave a comment, please do leave the comment, Jack Knocker. <laughs> we'll, we'll change it all the time if I all remember. Right. Yeah, I'll have to go I think home. that's fun. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Groucho Marx, according to Bill Keith, had a had secret secret word. Right. Um, <laughs> secret word. Exactly. Um, Elspeth Awake, hello to you as well. Ah, so Midnight Gardener, hey, and hello to Time Matters. Um, it's been a fun show. We're all going to go over to watch Jaren debating Aaron Ra, and it's not on Jaren's channel. And I've already forgotten the name of the channel. Where it's oh um, non sequitur oh something uh, hang on somebody I, can put it in the live chat I can't. I got the link for I got too much stuff there. in my mind right now uh -a -doo -boo. where there it is it is non sequitur show the non sequitur show right Aaron Raw versus Jaronism in the cage match of death <laughs> Coogan. <laughs> <laughs> Roddy Piper. Somebody might link it in the live chat. If not, anyway. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks to all. And uh I appreciate it. Talk to you later. And Mark, I will talk to you later. And mm, Jack Knocker and <laughs> keep it flat. Hail Hydra. George Clooney. Jack uh, Knocker. Jack Knocker.